At one point in our life, we've all felt scared and wary of growing up and getting old. The social construct of time has always been our greatest enemy and our biggest ally. Some say we have too much of it, while others say we have too little. But one thing is for certain when it comes to time. It is the only element that has ever granted us with the most precious gifts we could ever cherish. Memories. In today's episode, we will be talking about the memories that made us who we are today. Make yourself comfortable, grab a drink, and be with us today as we wade through two different stories from two different generations who have experienced firsthand what it means to truly grow up. This is episode two of Memories Made Known. What's up, College of Science? I hope you guys are all doing well this academic year. Most of you are probably grinding your requirements and cramming those outputs, but I hope that you guys could still find the time to breathe and relax, possibly even with the help of this podcast. I am Daryl, one of your hosts for today's episode. Yes, hello, hello, everybody. I hope all is well with you guys. And as Daryl mentioned, this has got to be one of the most hectic periods of our academic year, as we are finally halfway through. Despite our hectic schedules, however, we hope now you guys can still find time to do the things you love and reward yourselves with well-deserved breaks and breathers. I am Steph, and I will also be your host for this episode. Again, so welcome back, everybody, to to this brand new episode of Memories Made Known. We know how much stress and pressure this time of the year holds for us, and alam naman na some of you guys just want to take a break and maybe take a trip down memory lane to reminisce old times that we all miss and would like to look back on. Kaya naman for today's episode, we will be talking about the magical power of recall and how it has shaped us to be the way that we are today. So, ayan, for today's episode, guys, we will be tackling our upbringings and how we navigate through life today as a reflection of our childhoods. As young adults, maybe... Marami pa rin sa atin ang baffled as to how quickly our priorities in life are shifting and how rapidly we are being forced to mature by life. Kaya naman, we have invited special guests for today to tackle what it's like to grow up and get real. Yes, so our first guest is none other than Miss Charlene Padilla, who is currently Hello. serving as the Chief of Staff of the College of Science Student Council. She is currently taking up a Bachelor of Science in Psychology at our beloved university. Meanwhile, our next guest, Francis Reese, the President and CEO of Catholic Media Network and the Director of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. Hello po, Ms. Charlene and Father Francis. Thank you po for taking the time out of your busy schedules to grace us with your presence today. Welcome to the podcast po. Hello. Good afternoon to everyone. Kamusta naman po kayo this afternoon? How's your day po so far? Very busy. <laughs> hey, how, about you? How, about you? Uh-huh. how about you, Miss Char? Kamusta ka naman? Oh, um, quite day low. This, the, ngayon pala magsistart yung pagka-busy. I dropped off my niece to her school. <laughs> That's cute, that one. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'd like to know, and the people would like to know, po, uh, what it was like to grow up during your respective generations. Po. What was it like to be a child back then? Maybe Father Francis can answer this question first. Well, what age was uh, what you want to know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe ano po, around... 20 years old, yung mga ka-age natin, na men ganun. <laughs> and when I was 20 years old, that's uh, still a seminary, semin- mm-hmm. these are, were still seminary days. That I think I was then uh, finishing my philosophy course. Mm-hmm. That's one of the majors and also the second major was uh, psychology and English. So, well, it was still at the time I still had a girlfriend, you know, because <laughs> my uh, my spiritual director told me only when you enter theology that you cut a relationship from your 
Joa. No. Of course, he, he didn't use the term Joa then. No. <laughs> the girlfriend. Mm. And at that time, when you have girlfriends, they are just friends. They just start feeling that, you know, you're somehow more attractive to one girl than to the other girls and vice versa. So I also enjoyed sports. I was uh, a member of the soccer team. I was center half back then. And we had so many competitions with other schools. And uh, as seminarians, we play every day. We used to, to run three kilometers a day just to keep our legs firm and strong. So studies was not, well, it was not very difficult because if you like the subject, then you just keep on studying and trying to get good grades. And uh, there were no disturbances in our life because in the seminary, you're so protected. Uh, we're not even allowed to go out of the seminary except on weekends. I love also movies then. Mm -hmm. And I was there in Makati before Makati became the Makati now. There are so many talahib all around us. There's so much violence all around us. But you know, in this big fortress-like seminary, life was good. Mm -hmm. So we get visited once a week by our parents. We give them our laundry and they give us chocolate and some food. Because in the seminary, we, we were not well fed then. <laughs> we were well disciplined, we were rich in discipline. We were taught very well. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, excruciating, painful assignments they give you. And we had a lot of sports. And we also had a swimming pool, Olympic size swimming pool. So what else can you want in life? See, <laughs> That was my uh, happy moment when I was a seminarian then. Okay. So, so, Father, nag-sucker pa rin kayo ngayon. <laughs> na curious lang. With, I'm now 73, imagine. <laughs> I was 20 years old. But I can... Baka be, kaya pa. <laughs> can it be because I have an extra... You, I used to have six pack, six pack abs. Now I have two gallons in my stomach. So how can you carry that <laughs> running around? <laughs> <laughs> but I can still teach. I can give techniques. I can coach. But that's, that's how, how far I can go. Gets the man, gets the Father. Father, if I may ask, have you always wanted to be part of the seminar or? Priesthood, you mean about... priesthood? Yes, yes, Father. I was not so lucky to have experiences that, well, we call it uh, miraculous experiences like what Pope Francis experienced or other seminarians or other priests said, I felt the calling of God because this happened, that happened to my, to my life. Or like St. Paul, I fell off his horse after uh, he being hit by that very strong lights. No. Actually, I wanted to become a seminarian when I was still in grade five while studying in San Beda College, you know. In, uh, in uh, what do you call this, in Mendiola. Hmm. But then, I, I'm a guy who re always likes to be challenged. Challenged. When extreme challenge was not yet that popular. <laughs> so, my dad used to have a big uh, business in SAS in, uh, in the airport. So, we used to pass by Highway 54. Huh? Two-lane highway. Said, Dad... What was that? It looks like a fortress. He says, oh, no, that's not a fortress. It is a seminary. It's, it's, where, it's a place where priests study and live before they become priests. I said, oh. He said, no, 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 don't talk about that. You're such a mischievous guy that you will not survive in the seminary. I said, yeah? Why? The discipline is too tough for a guy like you. You will not last a week there. I said, Really? So that became a challenge. I, I, first, I wanted to become, I was already then in high school. I, I also wanted to become a pilot because, you know, when you become a pilot, pilot, you take care of hundreds of passengers. And if you commit a mistake, you don't only die. You, you also kill them in a sense, you know, because you, you pilot them. 
because for me that was a great challenge. So I said, yeah, I'll try that. Uh, I'll try it. I'll try, just try it. And of course, when I tried it, I passed the, the interview and I started in the seminary and I, I kept on uh, pursuing year after year after year. I really got somehow my vocation when I started going to the Bundoks. Um, even towards the end of high school, that's where I finished my high school in the seminary, I always wanted to do my apostolate in the mountain areas like Cordillera. Because as a city mouse, what do you see? All the pollution, all just the movies, all the big building. You, sh you see the, the, the building forest, you know, it's an urban forest, but not the real forest. So I volunteered for the missions with a missionary priest in, uh, in Cordillera, in Apayao, in Kalinga, where we used to walk and we built the chapels, we built this and that. And then there, there I saw the uh, meaning of injustice. At the time, there was so much lagging and there was militarization and uh, there were people just being killed because they're just nobodies. And if you have so much money, you have the military behind you, you have guns, of course you're powerful. So I was telling myself, uh oh, who can help these people? Nobody can. I couldn't help them. I became close to them. But there's an incident which already um, a pamphlet was written about vocations and that. I saw a girl there in the in the Bundoks. She was called, I called her Mabain. Mabain means coy, shy, but she was so beautiful. Very different from a Manila girl <sighs> at that time. That's the 70s or late 60s. Uh, women go out in public wearing hot pants. Wow. I don't dare say what you call the hot pants now. So it, it's, uh, it's not good to, to listen to that. But anyway, there is, I see her with long hair. Wow. And this girl is so beautiful. And she just keeps on smiling at me, smiling at us. So I did not notice. But you know, somehow uh, something deep hit my heart. And I used to go to their house. It's about 30 minutes high. And just to see her. Because she was so attractive, according to me. You know what happened to her? One morning, about 4 o'clock, people went to our camp and they knocked on the door of the of the convent and said, there's a terrible thing that happened. So we went up after hiking. She died. She was raped. The parents were killed. Only the small child, which they did not notice, who did not cry, lived. So, you know, it really pained me to see her body there. But what can I do? I'm just a seminarian. So I started thinking there, who can help these people? Who else can? So I thought, when you become a priest, you have nobody. You don't have a wife, you don't have a husband, you don't have, yeah, you don't have a wife, you don't have children. It's just you and God. So even if you die, you can fight for them. So, oh, yeah, no, pwede yun, ah. And that, that developed my vocation. And I started working in apostolate in the city jails, in the poor. Then I again saw the injustice, injustice, the lack of love. And people become monstrous because of the pain and the injustice happening to them. So I said, yeah, okay. So I pursue my priesthood and I study the different social problems, the development framework and all that while a seminarian, of course, especially in theology. And we were part of Vatican II. And I like Vatican II, the way these big documents were written. And that's why when I became a priest, I went to the serve in the Sierra Madre Mountains for three years. But then I started liking the place and helping. And I felt that I was able to connect with the local folks, especially the farmers, the fishermen, the women, the IPs, you know, the Dumagats. So I stayed on and up to now. I have not left the place despite the fact that I was yanked back to Manila for many uh, big 
work that we have to do organizationally, like Catholic Media Network, the federations of cooperatives and, and NGOs or CSOs. So that was my vocation. It was not just like that, you know, it took time. Huh? Of, of I, I felt being called, not, not, but not really the term calling, it's, it's, it's a kind of work that you feel is so much needed, but nobody wants it. Nobody wants it, or very few wants it. But I also, I also saw there the, the big risk in your life. But that risk means nothing because all of us will die. And if you're a priest, so long, so long, mo yung pananagutan mo. So long, so long, mo yung pananagutan mo na in case something happens to you. Well, you know, it's God who will protect you. And if God wants to get you back, because may pogi poich ka na, kukunin ka na. Ah. So that was, uh, well, I call my, my vocation and how I ended up as a priest. Oh, I see, Father. I think that's very enlightening to hear na parang it, like you're calling us to serve as a priest wasn't immediate, no? Parang it took a lot of parang events in your life to realize that yeah. that was really where you wanted to end up in life. But how about you, Ms. Charlene? How was your childhood naman? And how was it growing up? I haven't seen much. <laughs> so, um, aside from what Father has shared to us, but I just want to share also that, and um, it's nice to know as well that Father was a bedan. I also I also studied in the same school for two years for um in senior Ooh. high school. Yes, also on the same campus in um it's there now in Beda University, Ma'am Manila Benjola. Okay, but um with my childhood, um we'll go back really at the at the very first few years, my childhood, we didn't have much technology back then. I think the first time that we had one was, I was in grade school, the Nokia. So I witnessed that, right? The Nokia that never really um, gets broken unless you deliberately do so. <laughs> and then the Blackberry and that. So we did not have much of the YouTube that now I see my niece, she's very much immersed into those kinds of things. But I was the outside kid. I still experienced 1020, Patentero, all the Chinese quarter, the playground around, and then your mom telling you that you should eat first, and then you need to go back to your house um, before 6 p.m., all the work. So that was kind of my childhood. I'm very much happy that I was able to mingle with my peers or like my neighbors back then. Uh, I was able to socialize on such an early time where we did not have so much distractions when I was um, still growing up. So I was an outside kid. I also used to bike a lot. So that was kind of the time in my age. And then growing up, I've always been the studious kid naman. <laughs> um, I was not spoiled as much. Like um, I kind of got even jealous at one point. Of course, I was a kid because some other kids, they had PSP. They had like Nintendo Switch or whatever that is that they kept on playing. But all I had were books encyclopedias even that until now it's really hard to grasp so that was my kind my, my kind of childhood i had my books i was also at school doing other extracurriculars because my mom she was she's a housewife so she's really um focused on how i grew up as a kid so i was always studying if not with my if not if i'm not at school or like my few times the few times that i was outside i remember mm -hmm. there was a funny anecdote or like a simple story lang naman that my friend told me when I was in grade school that now I don't remember that but she told me now that we're in college she told me that she messaged my, my phone the Nokia she messaged <laughs> that and then she said like at around 7 p.m if like I wanted to play or what what, what was I doing just to chat, chat a bit and then she told me that the, my mom was the one who replied to her and then my mom told her that I was already asleep then she told, then like she was thinking, like she was kind of judging me at that point. Like, why was she asleep at 7 p.m.? So that was kind of the story that I already, I, I don't, I don't have any recollection of it already. She just told me that now I knew how much that was, that how much my childhood was like at that moment. So there, I was really hyper focused a lot on, um, yeah, on how to get my grades and everything. But on hindsight, I wish I, um, 
went like more on other hobbies because <laughs> right now like when the pandemic hit I did not have a lot of things on my hand like what do I do, do I, if I'm not studying but yeah um I think that that will we will tackle that among other things um later on but generally I've had like the usual Filipino kid in the early 2000s so mag age reveal but tayo <laughs> I was born in 2000 2001 so you, you know the kind of um hype back then you know, Like saying on 2008, nine mga ganon na mga kids. So that that is my um simple childhood. And at the child, bakak pwede ka tayo ani father magsaker para may habi ka. Jolah. Habi ni father pa din nado sa mag techniques nagputsal din ako sa ano na but it's putsal. But yung ano but like since father mentioned naman yung teenage, same then mga teenage sa ano you know hindi ata tayo makakaligtas sa mga significant other. So, had Whoa. to go on through that ng uh, teenage, <laughs> teenage years. Um, and then, um, high school, still same. Still really still hyper, hyper-focused on <coughs> studies. Pero, yun, mayroon na tayong Instagram. Nag-start ng gumala, mag-megamall, mag-sleeping, <laughs> yung mga ganyan. Ano, na, nag-start na yung mga paalis-alis, pa-admire-admire. So, Yeah, just the usual one that I would say. Wow, it's really nice to hear no, na parang both you po, Father Francis and Ate Sharl, parang hearing both of your stories is very interesting because I think we all have our different stories from our childhood. Ayun. So, um, I really think that these are really nice insights po on what it was like to grow up during those times. Now, moving on naman po to our next question. So, at which point in your life na na-realize niyo po na yung priorities ninyo as individuals were starting to shift and that the things you care most about are starting to evolve? So, this time naman, let's hear first from Ms. Charlene. Okay. So, with the shift, I think the the thing about me is what I mentioned already is that I always had a 10-year plan, a 5-year plan I was kind of very, uh, I was not a flexible kid, nga, as I mentioned. So at, at a younger age, I already knew what I wanted to do. And then I always had this sense of social responsibility. That's why I worked with some of these people in community development. Um, I went to humanities and social science for my, um, when I was in senior high school, because I really knew that uh, at the, the my end purpose would be something that I would want to give back to the society because that was something that was embedded in me in grade school. But since we mentioned now, it is it is still my end goal, whatever path I would go to, like if it's medical school or if I go gap year or anything. But right now, aside from that, I now knew the essence naman of what I was talking about earlier to like immerse myself in other things that I was not able to experience because I was hyper focused on my academics. So it was kind of a different shift or like a different timeline from people whom I know because with other people they were able to do some extracurricular swimming, ganyan. I I did karate but um there um the point in my life is actually right now <laughs> now that I'm graduating <laughs> Um, I I see into it that I want to experience something else aside from those things that I bound myself to do, which is of course still important. I'm not um, saying that that's not good or like um, to to gauge myself in that. It was a good experience for me. But also um, aside from that, I think it's also important to um, immerse myself into some other things. Pero ako, honestly, na-gets ko yung sinasabi ni Ate Shaw kasi for me, um, ako din, next next year, graduate na and I guess the responsibilities of being an adult is creeping into me na rin because my parents are asking me what I will do when I graduate. Will I go to medical school or will I continue my family business or if I will do um, a doctorate degree for biology and stuff like that. So, I guess ako rin, in that aspect, Um, now that college years are about to end, and I think, do ko na realize na mag-adult na ako. Hindi na ako 18. <laughs> Hindi na ako. 
<laughs> Pero yun, would you like to add something pa, Ate Shal? Yeah, sure. Or... Um, To add up on what Daryl said, that's why I mentioned that the shift goes when you're already in your last year, which is I'm a senior year already, is because when you're in like first year of college, you just wanna experience college. You wanna experience mm-hmm. paskuhan, I experienced mm-hmm. it, you wanted, you know, you know that what they say na madami kang ma-experience sa college kaya sleepin mo yan. I've done in Harvard, nag-org tayo, nag-inyan. But when you're last year in college, it's where it hits you that the reality of life is already there. So, um, also the financial aspect of everything, the shift in priorities, that's something also on the table. Because right now, you have the capability to be independent, to be financially independent, um, and not rely on your parents so that's where it hit me as well especially now that i am living with just my roommate um right now i'm at home but i am currently also living in a dorm in manila so a lot of things include budgeting um doing your own groceries and with the inflation that we have right now it's kind of uh it's it's kicking you in even though you're not yet working you feel it because of the Um, of your grocery bill and other bills that come in every month. So before, that's not that's not the thing that I was um, able to experience because, of course, it was the pandemic. We were here. You will just tag along with your mom when it's groceries, and you would even add up some like chocolates or some of those things that you would want to eat inside your house. But the shift becomes different when you're already in um in your fourth year of college, and you know that um. You either you have to have like a certain sense of financial um, independence already, and it's coming there. So your priorities also, my priorities also kind of shift. As of now, I'm also kind of doing some sidelines. Like I help my friends who um also have other work. I have her work as a so um she also gives me some portion like money. I get money from that, and I also this coming November twenty six, I'm going to assist in an event. wherein I'm also getting some compensation. I also some, well, this one, I did not really, um, uh, like, I did not expect that I would get compensation, but I also spoke in um, one event, which I had some compensation. So from time to time, whenever there's an opportunity, um, before, I wouldn't really put it much on my, um, on, on the top of my list, like getting a few uh, money, but, Uh, my parents don't really, they do not tell me naman that you have to do it. But for me, I do not want to depend on my luxury already with them because they're already financing my school and maybe my medical school in the future. So this type of consideration, you already put it on the table when you're already at a certain age. And it's very different because I came in um in high, in like first year of college, I was 19 I 18, 18. I was 18. And then now I'm in my early 20s. And th- this is so much of um age reveal. Yeah, I'm turning 20 <laughs> soon. <laughs> na, um, this coming January. So there's there's a shift, right, from being a teenager to becoming an early adult. So one of the key things would be financial aspect. Because you emotion I like emotional, there's also some aspect in that friends I have, but I think the very, very like the factor that I wouldn't expect I would be putting on the table is the financial side of it. So, yun yung shift ng priorities as well as kung paano kung mag-decide, kung mag-medicine ba, kung mag-ganyan, finances would be on the table already. Mm-hmm. You know, Ate Cheryl, I, I actually have to agree with you, no? Actually, halos same yung sentiments ko din. Na parang, ako kasi parang, I'm the type din to parang overthink in that sense na parang, oh, Wow, parang I'm I'm now 20. So parang there's so many more responsibilities out there to actually worry about parang how to earn a living, um sustaining yourself, being independent and maybe in the future parang uh sustaining a family as well. And just the thought of being alone, not having to depend on your parents to do these things while still having like a social life and a stable career. Parang there's so many things to think about, to be honest. So, ayun, same actually. And just scary. And just scary yes, for true. me. Pero mm-hmm. how about you, Father Francis? How did you experience that part of 
your life. But meron po ba kayong na-realize na yung priorities nyo as an individual nag start to change? Well, um, which you you asked me at at age 20, but I, I just would like to share a few sentences prior to age 20 when I was young. What I noticed was we were well-disciplined. It's a very different world today. Well-disciplined. Your values are taught you in practical ways and by examples. Like my parents don't tell us, don't do this, don't do that. I just see, I just see that with them. So our discipline is not the first discipline, but I rather call it formation. You form the minds and the hearts. If you still have parents who disciplined you, thank them because it will help you a lot. Anyway, now forward. <laughs> for for my priorities, it's not the priorities because when when you when you become a priest, you don't even know what a priest what priesthood means or will mean. No, you don't. You just see a priest here, you see a priest there, but you you do not encounter them in their daily lives because you cannot just follow the priest. I was a uh, a um, night of the altar in Sambeda when I was in the elementary. So that's all I knew about priests. And I liked the singing of the of the monks. Wow, I felt I was in heaven, you know, whenever they sing in Sambeda. But anyway, what I saw was this when it talks about when you talk about maturity and priorities. My my apprehension was what will happen when I become a priest? What does it really mean? Is it just a dream? What will happen to me? How will I react to many things? Is money the priority of becoming a priest? Because, you know, if you're in Manila and priesthood, oh, it's a lucrative vocation, quote, unquote, because you have so many friends, you have so many sponsors, and uh, if your family has many also, friends, and then you'll be taken care of. If you have a big parish, then you can see that you will not go hungry. You don't even have to think about it. You'll be fed. You'll have your own bed. You'll have your own air conditioning. You have your own car in a few years. And no. But then I thought, if I will go to, to the Bundoks, what life is that? So that was for me the priorities. And it only really came across me when I reached the place, the rural area, where the whole world is quite different. The food that you eat, gosh, you know, what kind of food is this? The, the, the lodging that you have, banig, walang kutsyon, banig lang on the floor. Uh, and the language <laughs> they speak is not your language. The way they speak Tagalog is not your Tagalog. No, and the culture is so different, even the way they they talk to you the way they dress and they sometimes criticize your dress. I, I cannot forget this. I was teaching in a school, high school, and of course I was wearing my Beatles boots. Wow, of course, Beatles. <laughs> and the, the pants of the Beatles, you know, it's like a pencil cut, and then it's not um the the end of the pants does not reach the ground because you have to show your boots. So major my clip, yeah, it's so short, it's a bit short. So then the girls were, were giggling. Mm, I'm looking at my face, you know. What am I doing? What's wrong with me? You know, my zipper is also all unlocked. So what's this? So after one or two days in class, I asked one of them. I cornered two of them. One then the other. Come here, come here. Why are you laughing at me? Of course, they they became they blushed and they were so afraid. No, 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 no. I said, don't, don't worry. Just, just. Tell me, you know what, what they said? Father, nasaan ho yung baha? Where is the flood? Because you know, at the time, when you have pants or dress and you wash it, then it shrinks, right? Now, no more. So I figured, nasaan yung baha? Actually, did not understand it at first. Then they looked on my pants. Ah, I got it. So, of course, I thank you, and I left. But I was so infuriated by... My gosh, these people, they don't even know what the fashion is. That's things like that. <laughs> you know, you have to adapt. Everything you have to adapt. And their, 
and there's curtain school, it's not one inch below the knee, it's three inches before the floor. It, it, it looks ugly, right? But to wear a gown or wear a mini skirt, but not not uh, uh, three inches from the floor. It's it's, it's not it's not good looking. But anyway, also in, in the way you talk to them and farmers and us during those days, that was cello. Mm. You will really be mature as a person because you have to stand up for your people. You have to think. You have to look for strategies that you don't get killed, but you still want to help the poor. But if you have the poor, that means you are a communist, you're an NPA. But what do you do? You're there in the rural area. Huh? There are so many tragic events in my life that happened that really cost my life. So for me, that is real maturity. What do you do? What will happen when you're, when the fear creeps into your back? What happens when you have to react to your responsibility? What happens if you don't properly react to the challenges that is there before you? Especially in your prayer life. Because when, when things don't go the way it should, you start asking God, Bakit ganito nangyayari sa daigdig? Why is this happening to us? Why are there so many poor people? Why are there so many people who are sick, dying, they don't have the funds to go to a doctor because it's too expensive? Why is this a seemingly God-forsaken place? You're still asking that in your prayer. So your prayer becomes deeper and deeper. You read more the Bible, and then you see the answers to your own question. And what I found out was, and this is also part of being mature, insecurity in life will always be there. But, don't forget, the more insecure you are, the more God loves you. Why? Because you will always hold on to the to your God. But if God gives you everything, you will forget God. Because you have the money, you have the power, you are the big boss. Of course, you forget God about when, when, when that happens to you. So maturity is you conquer your insecurities. You conquer your fears. You conquer also your desires and wants because that is not very important for your life and your vocation. That is when I really felt, ah, I think I'm getting matured here. <laughs> Ayan, you know, I think those are, that sharing was really enlightening, I think, no? How about you, Daryl? Anong masasabi mo naman? <laughs> Honestly, ne- medyo na enlighten na ako dun sa sinabi ni Father about sa insecurities. Kasi syempre, as a, I don't know, t- considered pa ako as a teenager. <laughs> as a teenager, experiencing um, something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of insecurities that I could, ano, syempre, there's um, insecurities about um my physical appearance, insecurities about uh, my responsibilities, kung if I'm doing well enough. Pero I thought na syempre, once I grow up, it will be eradicated naturally. But I guess nung, kunay, nung sinabi ni Father, nung kunay realize na um, yung insecurities mo, you have to conquer it yourself. And I guess it will always be part of you. You just have to learn how to, you know, move around it and be let it be something empowering. Ganun. Kasi, you know, you would need, your your downs will parang, will give you something ins- more inspiring to fight for. Something like that. Yun. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, actually, same, no? Parang to add to that din, parang maturing is when you realize na parang it's your own life in a way na parang it's you, parang ikaw yung in charge and everything is up to you. So parang, like, let's say, ako nga, as I said, parang growing up, I was introverted. So parang, dati, napapaisip ako na parang, oh, what does this person think about me? And then parang, am I doing enough for myself? Am I, parang, am I on the right path? Ganun. So, ayun, parang I realized din na it's important to keep an open mind and to 
parang realize that no one should parang prevent you from going into the person that you want to be. Ayan, so with this, so how would you say has all your experiences so far, you know, from your childhood, your upbringing, impacted the way you used to view things as a budding adult and today as an accomplished individual? So this time, let's hear first from Ms. Charlene, then Father Francis. So um, the, the, the views and everything that impacted me as an individual, all the things that, um, all of those perspectives that I was able to, I, all the experiences, I think it impacted me in a way that it just solidified the purpose that I would want to achieve at the end of the day and how I would treat other people, how uh, my day-to-day basis and um, how I'm going to the trajectory of m- where my life would go as of the moment. Because um, as mentioned earlier, um, there's a big shift in what I was able to um, to experience in high s- in, in now. And then um, I think I would add up then dun sa maturity in a way na emotional maturity in a way that I was able to um, already mingle or like socialize with different types of people that I now know the boundaries that I want to set personally. Because there's a different aspects in individual. It's it's really hard to just pinpoint one thing. Like I'm going to do this, but there's a social aspect with you. There's a personal aspect with you. The different roles that I'm having right now, I think that's kind of like a, a big deal to juggle as well. Because when I'm at home, I'm a I'm a sister. I'm a um I'm a tita daughter, and then I'm also a friend. I'm also um a student. I'm a student student and then le- student leader to the council who serves for us. And then it's kind of like a different kinds of juggle and um juggling different roles at the same time. But the very um thing that would impact me and the thing that I would also want to realize would just be um do the things that is unique to you and just be able to carry out like carry out your uniqueness as much as possible because at the end of the day that's what would make you um like not really necessary because we're not a commodity no man but what you could what that's something that you could give out to other people no? and i would just also like to share that it's it's very nice to see and uh, along our conversation like with father he mentioned that maturity in their time is more of like imposed because you don't have anything to like it's like um it's already a, it would be in you already embedded in you because in martial law and then now it's something naman that we seek because um there's allowance to how we would like to get that maturity so yun lang yung nag impact talaga sa akin at the moment because at the end of the day also upon reflecting our conversation today the yung talain we we are going on a the same like pace yung 365 days blah 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 but we have really different timeline and naka naka ano talaga depend then yung how we're going to able to go by day by day on the social aspects of our lives so um at that moment kung ano yung mapipick up mo kung ano yung relate mo to other people you can share it with other people and just continue to do what you are doing like now um i kind of find my little calling <laughs> with this becoming chief of staff cuz just to share it naman um yung position ko siguro naman it's an, um with you guys i all, i worked with them box and then general and we want a community development no and after that did not know where to go cuz that was like the end goal already i did not want any other else but i bloomed and grew, grown into something that I know I want to take care of the people in the council, hence my becoming chief of staff. And um, I knew that I've always wanted to help in the mental health aspect. So I became here in psychology. Um, I'm a psychology major and hopefully say um, the research that we're doing now, it would benefit the um, LGBT community. All those things combined, the things that you are um experiencing um 
like one thing and another i can compile it and um give back and also use it for this, my personal experiences and just absorb life as it is um along the way so that's it for me it's the man i think just be yourself yung mostly summarized version ng pagsinabi ni Ate Shal. And Yun, how about you, Father Francis? How has your childhood like brought you to be the one, how you are right now as a body adult? How has it impacted? I never thought of that until now. But the way I see it, oh, it to my parents, the way they disciplined me, the way they showed me what is valuable in life, the way that taught me of integrity. They said, your biggest asset is your integrity. That means your name. Never sell your name because your integrity is your dignity. So never sell that, they said, because your name is your dignity. And you keep your dignity by your integrity. So never sell it. That is your greatest value that you have. Second value that you have is your education. So see to it. You try to start as much you can cobble up all the books and read them and practice <laughs> them. Because these are the things they can never steal from you. These are the things they cannot buy you out of it. No way. Yes, until you die. So, you know, just like it kept raining in my, it just kept on raining in, in my ears. For example, before my classmates, they were Many of them are, of course, um, children of the big business people. So you, you remember in the in school you have this uh, like a poster. It says I don't know if you ha- have this in in your class. Way back uh, elementary and high school, it says honesty is the best. I don't have that honesty policy. Is policy, policy. <laughs> yeah. So I keep on memory this <laughs> policy. So I, 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 I kind of just keep on looking at that. When I get bored, I start reciting it. Honesty is the best policy. And then my classmate said, Francis, that's no more. The policy, that, that's not normal, the saying of today. I said, why? He says, you know, honesty is the start of bankruptcy. See that? When you're honest, you get bankrupt. These guys are talking about. Well, in more sense than one, that's true. Look at today. Even in school, how many cheaters are there in school from elementary to college? Everybody seems to cheat, and even the teachers are not, are not disciplined in anymore. One time I asked a teacher, how come you're not disciplined? In fact, it's useless. It, what do you mean they're useless? It's useless. Okay. So how, how do, will you have a society that way? So for me, I also thank my teacher because they disciplined us. They taught us you study first before anything else. After your class, your academic classes, you can spend your time playing whatever you want to play, but not during my class hours. They're very strict on that. So I owe them, I owe this to them. How I was formed as a person, not, not necessarily as a priest, but just as, as a person. So I saw this growing up that it has honed myself. Because everything they taught us is more or less based on God, based on God's desire and Jesus Christ on how to be a human person. Because some people ask me, uh, ba talaga si Cristo pumunta dito? Sabi ko, and, and then they always say to save us. Sabi ko, no, 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 no. Yes, to save us from our sins, but what is the meaning of that? Jesus Christ taught us to be human human and divine. Not just saving us of uh, our sins, that's like cleaning us, giving us a bath. No. Because he embedded in our hearts love. But the devil tries to put around that so much cloud that you cannot release that love into fruition. So what Jesus did was he taught us how to love. He taught us how to be human. And that it's a mouthful. So, I said, Tama naman yan. so for me, this is uh, what helped me uh, uh, as a grown up. But now, of course, I'm no more just a grown up. 
I'm aging fast. <laughs> and that's another Parang hindi po halata. Oh, oh, come on. Youthful po. Youthful glow. Na youthful glow pa po. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm retired but still the CBCP appointed me again as a CBCP director. Oh, I said, when do I really retire? Huh? And a lot of things that I do, I still get the chairmanship and presidents of cooperatives, organizations, and all that. So what do you do? How can you rest? See? So again, again, I don't look for that. I don't have a career path on that. It just happens. So I told you about this insecurity. Not all your plans will, will, will be granted to you. No. You better trust, trust God. Do your best with whatever is given to you. Do your best, your full bests. And God will supply you this, uh, others. No? Like before, I, I wanted to travel, but not, 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 not so. It's not really a, a strong desire. Then somebody told me, Father, when you start traveling, you will give up traveling. <laughs> it, it, it came as a true prediction because naman, all my travels are work-related. Of course, nakakapasyal ka, nakakita ka. So, ngayon naman, gusto ko nang mag-tourista uh, lang or tourist, hindi na pwede, I'm too old. <laughs> too late to grow. So, you see, what I'm just saying here is, for me, everything is good. For me, everything is how to be and struggle to be the best of who you are. And I call this, if you know Maslow, right? Maslow motivation. There are, hierarchy of needs. Yes, hierarchy of needs. But it calls it more as a motivation. No? And the, but that's the needs. So after, yeah, uh, Sheridan, I like that because you're studying also psychology and to help people. No? I like that. So anyway, um, we found the modern um, philosophers and work of people of the church start thinking that self-actualization is not yet the last to run. Self-actualization is not, yeah, you can actualize yourself, all your potential, such, 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 such. but that's not enough. You have to have the last one, which is transcendence. And for me, that is something very big in my heart. You try to be better than your best always. You don't stop. Oh, naganda na trabaho ko. No! Improve mo pa yan. Because this, the embodied spirit, your spirit, has no limits. Only your body has limits. Your, your, your spirit has no limits. And you can do wonders and things that other people never realize you could do it. Oh, some just somehow your endorphin just flares up and... With God's help, your spirit is help. Not, not adrenaline. Ah. Adrenaline, you pull up and that's done. Endorphin, it gives you the power, but it's also a painkiller. That you start complaining, hindi ko na kaya, hindi ko na kaya. No, kaya mo yan, endorphin, you know. Of course, that is transcendence. And that is more on the spiritual side of who I am and who you are. So I always tell myself, Sige, kaya mo pa, improve mo pa yan, improve mo pa yan, improve mo pa yan. Of course, you struggle. Huh? You struggle. And it's painful. It's difficult. But that's who we are. God gave us so much potential as a powerhouse of possibilities as a human person. So I see this, that even as I grow older, I still try to do something. I still try to, to use up whatever God has given me, especially in helping those who need most. Those people who are, there's nobody that who cares for them and who defends them. So I think hanggang mamatay ako, ganun na lang yun. <laughs> Bahala. No? Kahit ugod, ugod ka na, just still do it. Make better always than your best. So that is the transcendental side of our embodied spirit as human beings. And that is what Jesus wants us to, to do. Like uh, yeah. what he did was impossible. No human being can do what Jesus did. Nag-sermon ako, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Father, it's nice to hear na parang, you know, I completely agree with you na, na parang 
a big part of maturing in life is parang the discipline that you had that you grew up with and as well as of course our faith god who has always been there to guide us and he also taught us how to love and to be more resilient towards life's challenges i think that's really good advice father and also i also think that what you said earlier about na parang god taught us how to be human at the end i think that's really important to keep in our minds ayan so for our last question daryl can you <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of advice po, what advice could you give to a struggling student faced by immense amounts of workload while trying to figure themselves out and navigating through the significant changes in their lives? Maybe father can answer this first po. Well, sa matupang matanda sa kasiguriya, no? Anyway, <laughs> I know life has changed. But I also know that the present generation, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I kind of know this. And don't tell me na yung youth lang ang mayroong ganyang problema. Akong matanda, ganun din. Because I, 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 I live in the same <laughs> generation. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, for example, I was, well, this was what? When I was 65, no? I'm now, I'm now 73. I was asked to give a retreat to fourth-year high school students, public, a public. Mm-hmm. And they chose me because the, those who organized it were about uh, uh, 500 students, but only about 100 volunteered to come because he sponsored the retreat unit uh, of a public high school. So I said, why me? There are so many other priests and I'm already in Manila. So they said, the one organizing said, hey, Father, you lang yung Uh, well, modesty aside, ikaw lang yung uh, wala kang, well, how, how did you call it? You, you don't have a prize for giving a retreat. Whatever we give you, you're just thankful for it. But easy lang. I came, I drove all the way from Manila, of course. I was 65 then. Uh, puti na rin ang buho ko noon. Pero hindi pa ganito. May konti pang ano dyan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, peppered hair pa yan. So anyway, As soon as that's a Friday evening, I gave my first lecture. Nobody was listening to me. They were so noisy. So I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. So what I did, I got the eraser and I said, I don't want to throw this to you, but everybody who are making noise, get out of the room. And I started pinpointing. So they left the room. Because I only accept here those who are willing to undergo a retreat. Okay, now I said that. I started talking to them, giving them examples. Then they suddenly saw that all these people who were so raucous started to come in one by one and sat at the back. After the retreat, after the retreat, there was confession. So they got three or four other priests. But then I had to finish my confession at 12 o'clock midnight because When, when they start going to the other priests, they escape and hew in my line. And the teachers could not stop them. So they'll go back to the other priests. The other priests start finished early. <laughs> so I said, well, why? And then towards the end, I asked them, why were you all laughing at me and all that? You know, what, what uh, three of the girls said, girls, but the man. I said, no, father, you're not going to We were joking, saying that, yan ang pang-retreat master natin, eh, nagmi-meeting ng mga uod at mga bulate sa lupa, itiintay na yan? Grabe so, naman. Tanda-tanda na yan, you know? I was not even given a chance. But my first question to them was, after I, I, I kicked out all the, red, all the others, I said, what is the number one song uh, that got the highest award? Mali ang mga sagot nila. So I played that song. Bakit ang tipa din? I started giving them song after song after song. You know, after that, I, I knew what was there. 
I knew how they thought. Wala pang TikTok noon eh. Wala pang TikTok noon. So you know, and they were they were surprised that I was living in this generation. So what I'm seeing is yung problema nung youth, problema rin ng old. And sometimes more painful because ngayon walang respeto sa matatanda. Ha? That old man, gano'n. So you know, my, my, um, what I, I uh, would like to share is what do I do about all these struggling problems? When you're old, everything that you think about, everything that you say is from behind. You look back. When you're young, you don't look back kasi wala ka pang titignan sa likod. It's always forward. That's the main difference. You have dreams and all that. Kami, wala ka na eh. In story lang namin yung mga what happened in our time. Paulit-ulit na yun. Repetition, repetition. Like a long playing record. Huh? And then you look back. So that's the main difference. But then the problems are the same. So for me, my advice is, which I also do for myself, try to study what pains you that's first number one what pains you and then you ask why is it painful then you go back to your human needs you have people whose lives are i mean it, it hurts you just to see them they don't respect you they're so bad you know, your tendency is to react in a negative way. No. Never forget that human needs, there is no human need is negative. Don't forget that. It's all positive. But when people behave negatively because they have not received their human needs, they were not given the chance to bloom, to be respected. They are not. So out of pain, the reaction is negative and they don't even realize that that is the bottom line of why they behave this way. So we have to understand others. But we have to know what is positive in us. And for me, every struggle is a challenge. And today, it's not just a challenge. We all like extreme challenges. Look at all the, the television, all the contests, extreme challenge, extreme challenge. Until you die, extreme challenge. Come on. The greatest extreme challenge is to face your challenges in your life. Because this is something that is life itself. So first is you look at your own needs and look at the other human needs that are not given the chance to receive it. And we're all the same. When your human needs are not fulfilled, you really feel bad. And that's when you become bad. So, in conclusion, the extreme challenge is, are you ready to push for positron? Or you want to become the negatron? Mm -hmm. Where do you see it? The darkness or the light? So, that's, that's how I see it as a challenge to them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ayon. Thank you so much, Father. It's so... It's kind of um ano lang, it's heart it's heart like a heartfelt message as well to our generation because the things that I can provide like what father said it's just always ahead eh. but like father was uh, um able to tell us na he's been there already on what aspect of our lives we're still going to go through but at the end of the day we just have to um look upon our human needs and as well as um, consider the needs of others because maybe there's something lacking in them. That's why they're behaving in such a way that is not really positive because it's just um, we grow as how we are tended to, right? Like, kung, um, kung ta like you give a plant water, then it will grow. But if you do not um, feed them, like you put them in the darkness, they will not grow like how they're supposed to be. So I'm also getting that and also wondering or like reflecting on that message for us but on the particular thing i guess that i could give with um the young adults such as me who are um juggling a lot of things all at once and um what was the last um question um, navigating themselves through the significant changes 
So, marami-rami pa tayong significant changes if you're in this age, like, mag-25 natin, dun pa lang yung totoong formative change ng, um, well, scientifically, but also magkakaroon pa ng different changes. Um, family, uh, economic changes, social changes, there are a lot of things, no? Pero siguro, as of the moment, when my friends and I, of course, ayun na nga, seniorities ng college, you're talking about what are you gonna do, and everything right now, sober na yung mga pressure ng mga bagay-bagay. My friend um, sent me naman this quote that I um, resonated. It, it, it's put in a way na I think would also be in line with the needs that Father mentioned. It's that um, the, the moment a person reaches their 20s, society puts pressure on them to have everything in order while forgetting that they have never adulted before. <laughs> Your 20s provide a unique opportunity to re- learn, relearn, grow, adapt, develop, and change. You're not meant to have everything figured out. You're meant to discover what being adult means to you. And I think... Um, the word figure out is something na palaging ini-impose. I need to figure it out. I I um I put it upon myself all the time. I need to figure it out already that I forget that there are things to discover still because I don't know everything right now as of the moment. So I cannot put a timeline as to how, oh, by the time that I'm 25, it's already like this, you know, or like 30s and everything because we we adapt how things are going through us and there's always a room or as to how we would be able to grow. So, Marin Pam, give, I, I guess, for me, it's just give um, a room for discovering for other mistakes so that you will grow. And um, one key thing, aspect as well, is to have a great support system. And this support system may take a, um, different forms. It may be your friends, your parents, who are your support system, God, um, your uh, support system in um in your work, everything. But right now, I think it's very easy for us to just think that we're alone while navigating through this. But do not forget that I um you're not exactly alone in navigating it. Which is why I also like that we're conversing with the, the, these things right now because I get to learn a lot from Father, who's mentioned na ayon a lot he has seen a lot of things already and it would benefit me as a person who's just going through this and I could talk to you guys as well and um, as uh, popular as your own, you're on your own kid is going about right now, you're never really on your own because it takes a village to, um, to raise a child as how they say and you are still growing up and it would still take a village to um to grow right so you're never really on mm-hmm. your own and it's nice that you would have a great support system because that support system would help you navigate things and um whatever it is that you are like rooting on or like kung saan ka um kung sino support system yung pinagkukuhanan mo ng lakas ayon and um it would greatly benefit you as to how and Yon, um just discover things and hopefully wala naman yun nga walang negative tayo na needs just fill that in and it would reflect as well to other people on how you'd be able to give back and i think it would be a very nice place if we just go back to our human needs and also be humane to other as what father mentioned to us and be kind to one another ayon Wow, that's it. that's really great advice to hear po from both you, Father, and Ate Charles. And, you know, I really have to agree na it's really important to have a, a solid support system because kaya nga parang other, other people are there for you and that we'll be there to support each other with our ups and downs. And ayun, yung discovery rin, I think, because, I mean, since mga 20s, <laughs> mga 20s pa lang tayo, parang there's still so much more out there to find, to learn more about, and to experience. And ayun, I really, really enjoyed today's talk because it gave me a lot of meaningful insights about growing up and what it means to navigate through life as a young adult whose priorities are also shifting and whose individuality is starting to grow firm. 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, that's very nice to hear, Steph. Uh, no, honestly, very meaningful your talk, Nat, and I g- gained a lot of quotes and teachings. Um, I guess what I remember the most and what uh, resonated the mo- most the most to me is like what Father Francis said na your biggest asset is your integrity and that your integrity is your dignity and it won't be something that's gotten from you easily or something like that. And yeah. So um, as much as we enjoyed having this conversation with our guest speakers, we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode as well. Um, for now, we would like to ex- extend our utmost gratitude to Miss Charlene Padilla and Father Francis Lucas for spending their time and their stories for us to hear and learn from. We'd also <laughs> like to express our utmost appreciation to our listeners who tuned in today for sticking around and openings and spending time with us. We hope that you guys were able to gather a lot of insights and life lessons from Father Francis and Ate Charles and from the memories made known by our guest speakers. Indeed, life is like a swing on a playground exhibiting its own ups and downs but never staying stagnant at the helm of its rightful rider. But unfortunately for us, this officially marks the end of our podcast series for now. Again, (laughs) we are your hosts, Stephanie C. Uh, And Daryl Monson, reminding you that memories are best made known in the service of others. Thank you and have a blessed day ahead, everyone.